that. What we'll do now, we're going to go ahead and just get these edges ironed down good. I'm going to pull it around, lay it over where I can get to it. But we're going to pull it right on around the sides here. Kind of get that pre-ironed down into this seam like we showed before. And that way we can go ahead and mark this and we'll cut it with our pinking shears. And get that fit, then we can go ahead and do our our final gluing on it. Now we've talked about uh, covering this area up here in preparation for the top skin. While we're letting the glue dry on the vertical fin back there, we're going to go ahead and glue this piece in. What I've done on that, I've got the fuselage kind of upside down, but this is the top channel here above the uh, door frame. You see where that is, where the gap seal lays into here. What I did, I brushed glue up on the inside edge of that and let that tack up. Then I went ahead and pushed the fabric up into there like we've done in the past and then brushed glue and then took my finger and wiped it into there real thoroughly to let it glue to this inner edge. And that's tacked up good now. So we're just pull this panel around and we're going to let it continue right on down to the trailing edge of this portion of the, the root section where the wing mates up to this and the gap seal attaches. And again, we just kind of tack everything in by hand, kind of get the fit and the finish of it. And this, we'll just go ahead and bridge on across. I went ahead and pre-glued everything a few minutes ago. And you can see how that starts filling this area in here. Now we've got the second half of the vertical fin covered and Looks like the glue's dried up pretty good. So we'll go ahead and we'll start the preliminary shrink on this. See what we can do with it. Again, just kind of work around it, try to keep the shrink as uniform as you can. Get up into this section here. Like that's starting to pull up pretty nice. Give a nice transition through there. And we're just going to put the first shrink at 250 degrees on it. looking pretty nice. A nice transition through here. Real hard to get that with an envelope. A lot of times it'll be loose and it'll change this radius through here quite a bit. Okay, that's got that. Uh, what we'll do now, I've shown how to do these side areas here. I'm going to go ahead and get this side covered and then the next step will be to go ahead and get the top fabric put on it that point that is covered, the only thing left to do then is lay out wherever we're going to put our reinforcing tapes on it. We're also going to have to put a nice finished ring around here. There's also a fairly large grommet that glues into this area here so we can get in to attach the fittings on the elevator horns and so forth. They've got to clear it go into here. So once it's all on, we'll go ahead then you know, and show where all these pieces go and get that stuff laid out. Now we're ready to go ahead and install the top of the fabric. We've showed the different stages of covering the fuselage, the bottom, the two sides, both sides of the vertical fins. Uh, during a break, we, I went ahead and I brought all of this up to full tension. We could have gone ahead and, uh, and waited until after it's all done, but I had a little extra time. So everything's up to the full 350 degrees to this stage. I'm going to demonstrate now how to install the top of the fabric main thing I want to cover is this forward area where the, where the fabric has to wrap under this tube here. This is the area where the windshield, top of the windshield slides into this slot. 
and the fabric needs to wrap and bind into there. So we're going to lay the, lay the fabric up here, lightly tack it into place, and then I'll show how to get this good glue joint on this uh, front top, and, uh, top of the cabin area there. So I'll get up on the ladder here and we'll get the uh, fabric laid out and then we'll come back and show how to proceed with the rest of the cover on it. Okay, we've got our panel of fabric laid on top of the fuselage. Notice we've got a pretty good amount of surplus around the edges, which is fine. You're better off to have a little too much than not quite enough. What we're going to do is just rub this in and lightly tack it into place across the top of this windshield bowl. Main thing you want to make sure, get the lay of fabric on it. Make sure that you've got plenty of overhang on both sides and that you've got enough fabric up here to where you can tuck this in and get that good glue joint. So we're going to do the same thing we've done in the past. We're going to use the iron here, and we're going to tack it into place. We've got a pretty good bind on it there. I'm going to have to run around the other side. I've got about four inches there that I couldn't reach. And I'll just roll the thing over. We'll catch a little right here. Okay, now I'll go ahead and get my stuff laid out and show you how to go ahead and glue that in, into there. What I like to do is take me a piece of wood. This happens to be an old uh, piece of yard stick. And what we're going to do with this is use this as a packing medium to force the fabric back into the into that area. And I'm doing it dry right now just to demonstrate this. But that's what that'll do is that'll push that fabric back in to the cavity here. I didn't push it all the way in. What we're going to do now, we're going to pull this out, we're going to apply a good coat of wet glue back up inside of this channel in here, and we're going to put some glue on here. We're going to wrap this with a piece of uh, wax paper so the glue doesn't stick to the, to the uh, wood here, and then we're going to pack that into place and we'll just leave this in place to give it plenty of time for that glue to dry. <clears throat> Even though this glue dries fairly rapidly, keep in mind that's in a pretty tight closed area, so the, glue, the drying time is going to be slowed down considerably. I'll probably leave this in place until probably t sometime tomorrow before I even pull it out. So we'll go ahead and get the glue out. We'll go ahead and pre-glue all of this and then we'll pack that into place. That's one of the real important parts of the covering process. Uh, there's an AD with pipers. They actually, a lot of them have a reinforcing strip of aluminum that fastens over this and comes back and protects this fabric. That AD applies on any of these if they're covered with linen or cotton. The AD does not apply if they're covered with seconite. So especially a lower speed airplane like this, this is all you need. Once this is glued in, then I do go ahead and I finish this with a piece of, uh, of finishing tape and I'll actually wrap that over and catch it on just the inside edge of this outer part of the lip. And that makes a nice finished edge and takes all the wear off of the trailing edge of this, uh, of this form piece of channel up here. So I'll go ahead and get the glue out and we'll show you how to finish the gluing on that particular part. Now we've got the fabric tacked in place with the iron here. So we're going to go ahead and do our final glue on this portion right now. Once that's in, then we'll go ahead and tack down and glue the perimeter on the rest of it. This is a real important area. A lot of these old pipers you take apart, you find this piece in here is very badly corroded. Because a lot of times the, they don't get sealed up good with glue. The windshield doesn't get sealed up good. They get water in there and over a period of time, they slowly rot and corrode away. You can see where they're tack welded into place here. Uh, they're not real difficult to replace. We're very fortunate. This one was in exceptionally good shape for an airplane that was built in 1948. So what we want to do is really try to push the glue back into there. We want to get a real good glue joint in there as much to seal the water out as it is to glue the fabric because it doesn't take a lot of this glue to really anchor this fabric into place back in an area like that. We're just going to try to brush a fairly wet coat of glue up into the cavity. And then once we're done, we'll go ahead and brush a wet coat on the fabric itself. 
So we'll have plenty of glue in there to hold it. But again, one of the things we're trying to do is seal this up so we don't have a lot of water contamination after the project's finished. We'll just work glue into there. Don't want a lot of the, surface, the exterior there. What I'm going to do is just while that's wet, I'm just going to wipe that off so we don't have a mess to deal with later on. There, that cleans that up pretty nice. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to go ahead and brush a pretty wet coat of glue on here, whiter than what we need. And we have to work fairly fast here. We don't want this glue to start trying to dry on us. That yardstick I'm using was a little too thick, so I went ahead and put it on the belt sander and I reduced the thickness of it a little bit. And the end that goes into here, I actually radius the end so it can really kind of fit the contour of the back of the bend on that cavity. Okay, we got it wet with glue now. I'm going to bring it around. I've got my yardstick here. I've got that wrapped with some. Uh, Wax paper. We're going to get that fabric in place. Now we're going to take the yardstick and we're going to start pushing that fabric down into the cavity. It's wet and slick with glue. You can see it's, it'll slip. It starts coming into place. There, we're getting that down. I want to push it right on down in there pretty darn tight. We're coming down past the overhang here. So again, I want to try to bed that down into the bottom of that cavity as much as we possibly can. Okay, well the glue Still nice and wet. We're going to wipe any spoilage off of here. We don't want showing through. There's a little bit here on the top edge. Wipe that out of there. And we got a little mess here. Kind of go ahead and wipe it off. This is the finished part of the tubing. It shows, so we really don't want a bunch of old dried glue showing through on this. So, well, we can still wipe it off and just clean that up. There's a little bit left that's dried on there when we're through. We can take the old the eraser trick we showed on the other film where you can take the gum eraser and actually <clears throat> erase off the dried glue. Use that for a cleanup. Okay, that's got the, the major part that's of really importance on this uh, top of the fuselage. We're going to go ahead and set it back up in an upright position now, and then I'll go ahead and pull it uh, lengthwise of the fuselage and, and then start working the wrinkles out and light tack it into this glue that we put on earlier. So we'll go ahead and get it back up level and then we'll show the rest of the procedure here. Okay, we've got the fuselage back up in a pretty much an upright position here. If you look along the top you can see how the fit is on the where we've inserted the fabric into there. That uh, here, open up the, you can see here's where the yardstick is. It's actually back past the overhang here. We've got that pushed in pretty well bedded out to the bottom of this cavity. So that fabric is making a nice S loop through there. It's glued on all those surfaces. That'll add an awful lot toward future protection, corrosion protection in there. Uh, at this point now, we've got the fabric laid out. We're going to go ahead and just light tack this side here into that dry glue like we've already demonstrated. That gives us a preliminary start. Then I'll come around to the other side and just kind of pull the slack out of it. 
And again, if we need to, we can always come back and pop it loose and redo it. Main thing is just to kind of get it started here, get the bulk of the slack pulled out of it. And attach it down into place. Nice part of this, notice I didn't glue this just before we put the fabric on it. I actually applied the glue to this earlier this morning. We had some issues with the camera, so we've been held up for a while. So it just shows that you can pre-glue ahead of time and come back and still work this glue. Now if it's, uh, if it's real humid, uh, it'll slow it down a little bit. But normally I've gone as much as a day or sometimes two days and still be able to wipe into here like this. If you find that it's over dried on you, you can do the same thing, get it in place, and then just the slight heat from the iron is going to do the same thing we're doing with our hand pressure here. So what we'll do now, I'll go ahead and finish pulling the fabric, the slack out of it, get the lay the way I want it, and it's going to be the same procedure again. We'll go ahead, mark the sides here after we've clamped it with our iron. I'll go ahead and mark my cutout, take our shears, we're going to cut the perimeter, and then we'll lay it in, do the final gluing, and at that point, the entire fuselage is covered. Down here on the back, where the radius is on your on the vertical fin, you can see how nice the transition is on that. I've got about an inch and a half of glue line there. This will all pull in. Once I get the lay where I want it, get it clamped, I'll go ahead and mark this, cut that with the shears, and then we'll come back later after I finish gluing this all on and it's shrunk, and then we'll come back we're going to show how to lay the tape into here and how to finish this area off and talk about areas where we will normally apply tapes. We've already shown that on the other series. We won't show the actual application of the tapes. Uh, we'll probably come back and show a picture of the finished fuselage with all the tapes and everything in place. The main purpose of this DVD, we've had a lot of requests from people, was how do you cover a fuselage? So this is the basic steps we've just demonstrated to cover a fuse lodge with the blanket method. There's the bottom, the two sides, the vertical fins, and the top. Now there, this is not cast in concrete. This is a good rule of thumb of how to do things. Uh, another example of that is a Satabria. It has an oval shaped fuse lodge. There's a couple backbone stringers come down. And it works very well on that to actually bring this fabric around to the backbone stringers. We can legally do that because we're allowed glued overlap seams on any part of the structure. And by doing it with that particular airplane, this whole side panel and the vertical fin can be done as one piece. It worked out very well. Um, so like I say, this, there are options on how to do this. This gives you the good basic steps of the bottom, the two sides, the pipers and a lot of airplanes, a vertical fin separate like this, and then finish with the top fabric. So, again, it's the basics. If you prefer an envelope, keep in mind that you're going to have some slack areas around here. You've got stitches through here that you're going to have to pay attention to to keep the nice straight runs. And, and they're like a big sock. The sock won't just pull and stretch over, so you've got a big area that's cut open where you kind of lay it over in somewhat of a pre-sewn blanket and you still have a lot of cutting and trimming and stuff to do. Personally, I prefer the blanket method. For me, it's easier to do. It might take a little longer, but I'm always happier with the end results. So with that, we'll go ahead and stop, uh, conclude this portion of the covering. We'll come back and show a little bit of the final assembled uh, end product. So that, that should do it for, for this part of the series. Okay, now we have the final piece of fabric on the airplane. We've done the bottom, the two sides, the fins, and now the top is in place, then brought up to the full 350 degree shrink. Now that what's left to do on it is to go ahead and do all the finishing tapes, tapes over the areas where the tubing can contact the fabric. You know, what I'm going to show right now is an area that is uh, a little difficult for a lot of people. We need to put our tape down this leading edge. <clears throat> Normally, I would go ahead and, and apply this tape here first, 
<coughs> for time constraints, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and apply this so I can demonstrate that, and I'll just leave it loose on this end so I can go ahead and lay that tape and tie them together. This, this is the only place I use bias tape. And a bias tape is biased because the grains of the fabric run at a 45 degree angle through the tape. That means when you pull it, it'll stretch and do some funny things. That's a real nice feature to have on this area right here because we have a reverse contour. This outer edges have got to stretch rather than contract. A bias tape allows us to do that fairly easily. Another thing you have to be very careful when you lay a bias tape, if you start stretching it very much, you're going to drastically alter the width of the tape. That three inch tape's gone down now to about a two inch tape. So I've got a piece here that I very carefully folded and put a light center crease in it. You can do that by folding it. Hold it, don't stretch it, and then just lightly drag it across the surface. The nice part of that, because I've done that, now I can use that for a center reference down this leading edge of this vertical fin. I've pre-glued this, just this area right here. We've demonstrated that on some of our other DVDs. And all we're going to bond to is this outer radius at this time. I'm, not, I'm going to be very careful and not stretch this tape. I don't want to change the width of it. So we're just going to lay it into here, tack it into place. Again, with this glue system, it makes this a very easy process to do. You can see it staying right there. And when I cut this tape, I cut it longer than we needed it. It's always nice to have a little extra to work with. And just bring it right on down around the radius here. Now, we should be able to start pulling this around this radius. It'll let that happen because it's actually stretching a little bit out of this other part of the tape. So as you can see, that'll start laying right in there. This will lay down. Okay. I'm going to get my iron. We've got that pretty well where we want it. So what I'm going to do, I really don't want to shrink the tape. I just want to lock it in place. Again, I'm going to start down here because I'm going to pull that loose to put the other tape on later. I just hold the tape down so we don't get on it. And you can see the glue line that's formed there. That's my glue clamp. That tape is firmly locked in place now, and it's not going to move on us when we start doing our final gluing on this. And a little bit right up through here. Okay. Now, the only thing that's left to do on this now is just brush the glue. You can either brush it through the tape or you can brush a little bit underneath it and then brush down through it. Wipe it off just like the rest of these because we've got this in place now. You're not going to start changing the overall length of the tape and you should have a nice uniform width on this 3 inch finishing tape. I'm going to hold off on gluing it down. Well, let's see, on this it won't matter. This, the, the vertical fin area, We'll have a couple dollar patches put on here to hold it. And then down on this lower surface, I'll show how to put a couple ties through here just to stabilize and dampen the fabric. Uh, we'll show that a little later time. Um, we'll put, I'm going to stop here for just a second, then we'll roll the fuselage up, and I want to demonstrate and explain how we do some of the cutouts and the fittings. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about how you finish off some of these areas. I explained how we cut the aluminum pieces. Uh, I did the other side. I've got that large cutout in it. That's already glued in place. I glued it on the inside of the fabric because I'm going to have a panel that lays flush without a break on it. These pieces here actually have a little bent lip around the edge that go over this cover plate. So the aluminum can be on the outside. That's not a problem. Notice around the uh, exit here for the front stabilizer tube, 
we had the hole cut in the fabric that's been finished with a little round patch here uh, down here where the aileron cable is going to come out I'll take just a moment here I'm going to grab a piece and show you why you save some of your some of the parts when you're doing a project this is a panel of the old fabric that was cut out of this see the hole here where the trim cables came through it this is where the tube extended right here and we can lay that and we can see exactly where this laid on this fuselage originally makes it real nice to be able to do that in position our cutout for the rudder cable if you did not have this if you start with a bare project to find the location of that hole the easiest way to do that is put the rudder on it string the cable and then you can slide a piece of cardboard this direction or this direction until it contacts the cable you can cut the slot in it figure exactly where that's going to go and index mark yourself so after it's covered you can put that pattern back up here and your index is exactly where the cable came through you know where to cut it I brushed a little glue around this what that will do now is stabilize that hole when this is cut out I'm going to go ahead and put the little aluminum fair leads on this particular airplane like I showed in the in the wing covering DVD so we've got our we're going to go back to this part now we've got our aluminum piece on notice I've glued around I've got glue on the outer structure what we're going to do is just cut this and I'm going to leave myself about a half an inch or so and we'll cut all the way around this like that razor blade works pretty good a real sharp pair of scissors will work good doesn't have to be real precise thing you're just making your cut out so you can expose the open hole again with that glue on there this fabric cuts really nice and clean you don't have a lot of frayed edges okay now this glue was applied earlier it's been on there for some time I'm going to take the scissors and makes this really nice because we can go ahead and cut some splits, pull that piece up and lay it into place. But this glue is very aggressive when it's wet like this. I never consider a joint like this to be a airworthy structural joint, but for this type of stuff, it works really nice. You're not waiting for glue to dry, you just put it on, you know, you're, right now we're actually treating this as though it was a contact cement. Go right on around it. And I'll continue doing this till I've got all of these little tabs cut. Then we're going to come back and we'll show the little doily then that goes over this to finish this piece off and make a real nice looking uh, finished product out of it. And a nice part of this is that this being aluminum, when we drill the mounting holes for our cover plate on this, we'll use number four PK screws. And a number 44 or 45 drill bit works real nice. I like about number 45. And when you put the screw in there, it cuts a set of threads. And during annuals and so forth, if you pay attention when you reapply those, and get it started in the same set of threads that are already cut that's going to last for years I've got some covers like this and they access plates that have been on projects for over 20 years and the same screws are still screwed into the original holes so that's a real plus for this aluminum fixture versus the plastic so since we get done here we'll come back and we'll show the little doily that goes over it alright we've got our piece has been glued into place, it's cut, and you can see how this inner panel of fabric here wraps around this. We're going to put a trim doily on it. This strictly is to finish off that piece of aluminum. Makes a real nice finish for it. And that'll kind of lightly tack into place here. We'll kind of get it centered about where we want it. And one thing you can do on this is go ahead and pre-glue the area first and that'll help really tack it in by hand. 
The main thing is here though, I want to show that this doily goes on and after that's on, then we'll go ahead and cut it on the inner radius and then glue it and then tuck those folds in to the inside area. And then what we've done now, we've totally encapsulated the edge of this aluminum in two layers of fabric. And it really stabilizes it and makes it hold up very well. It'll last like that for years. So we'll go ahead and brush some glue into that. We'll just get a pretty good area of it around here to start with. The little areas where the folds of the fabric where we put the little tabs and brought them over are not going to show because all of this is covered with a metal cover plate. So you don't need to be real critical on the fit and finish of this. On the other side of the coin though, it's a nice, a good idea to get in the habit of trying to do a really nice job on it because areas that do show then are automatically going to be done exceptionally well. So just because it doesn't show, don't treat it like you can just kind of cobble it together because it's kind of a reflection on the whole job. So while that's still nice and wet there, do the same thing. We're going to take our little paper towel here and just wipe that real wet surplus glue off. And again, by doing this, we're getting rid of any surplus build up a glue that would tend to show through our finish. Notice I put a little glue out here. When this is cut, all that's going to lay down nice and tight. Well that's the way we do that. We'll uh, go ahead now and I'll go ahead and lay the tapes. On this I think normally a lot of times we'll use two inch tapes on this particular project, I'm going to use probably a one inch wide tape on here. We don't need the real heavy wide tapes. When they're done, then these will be finished with either a two or a three inch tape here. I'll make that decision here in a little bit. Once they're all done, all the tapes are laid and finished, we're going to come back and have one more shot of the finished product here and then we'll kind of go over any highlights if, or points of interest. The main thing we've covered here is a sequence to cover the airplane. Like I say before, if you don't use an envelope, if you go the blanket method, you need to do the bottom, do the two sides, do the vertical fins, and do the top. I say on the Satabri and some different airplanes, you can do the bottom, do the two sides, and the fin is one piece. This depends on how well that fabric, how it all joins together. That's something you have to decide when you start to do the covering. So at this point, we're going to shut it off and we'll come back after I've got all the tapes laid. Uh, you've seen that uh, process in previous DVDs. Now we've got all the tapes in place. Uh, before we start really taking a look at those, there's one detail here we want to cover. And that's on the vertical fin. I talked earlier about how to stitch these. <clears throat> on this, I came in six inches and then another six inches. These are actually stitched and pulled down to the rib but on this upper um, piece of rib material in there. As the fabric transitions on down to the longerons, it starts pulling more and more away from the rib. If you suck that in tight to the rib, it never looks really good. What you want to do on that is you go ahead and take your one inch long reinforcing tape, because we're, all we're putting on here is dollar patches. We're not running the full tape. And on that, what you do is you go ahead on this area here, you pull your stitch around just like you do on these up here, but you don't suck it down real tight. You can see here, a couple I've already put the dollar patches on, we have just a light dimple in the fabric. Shows up a little better there with the glue. And what that does, that takes all the drumming and pounding out of this fabric. It acts like a shock absorber in there, but yet it lets it maintain the natural flow and the transition down through the vertical fin. <clears throat> We've got our cutouts here now where the elevator horns go. 
you've got access into that. Of course, our big cutout on the other side. On this particular airplane, I chose to go ahead and use the one inch tapes on all of the areas where the fabric could contact underlying structure. So we've got one inch tapes on that. Two inch tapes are perfectly acceptable. And again, any place where there's structure that this fabric can drum and bump against, I like to put a tape over it. In this case, it started dropping away, but that, that structure is real close right in here. So I went ahead and laid a tape there. On this area here, I used a three inch tape, rolled about an inch on the top, and allowed the two inches to come down on the side. It gives a lot of overlap <clears throat> and really adds a lot of integrity to this glue joint here. You can see here on the ends, one thing I like to do is, you see how we radius the tape here instead of just a raw square cut. It just adds a little to the aesthetics of it. Um, areas like this, one area we did that's not really necessary was where we added the fabric along here. I went ahead and added a tape into here. What that's done now is made a very nice water seal, <clears throat> so we're not going to start trapping water down in this channel. Like I say, well, my airplane's inside all the time, but that doesn't really apply because over periods of time you're going to wash them. So anytime you wash them, they get you know, any place water can get into them, it tends to get into them. All the tapes on the top here, across all the stringers are taped. I mentioned before that once this was done, we were going to put a tape on here and just tuck it under. So when I glued it on, I left about Oh, it's maybe a quarter of an inch sticking out. I've already pre-glued that. And we just roll it up under there, press it into place, and that'll never go anywhere. Just finishes off this area where the windshield goes. <clears throat> and it adds a little more uh, reinforcement to where the, the top fabric wraps around that structural member there. A little airplane like this of a Seekonite you really don't need to worry about this failing in flight. And again, the STC doesn't apply on this area with the, uh, with the Seconite fabric, or with the polyester type fabric on it. Another area I like to finish off, cutouts around where the gear legs go and strut fittings. I make up a little cover patch, and it just kind of cleans up all of these areas. Here's another piece here where it comes around, and it once that's all uh, painted, it makes a real nice fit and finish on all of that. So that pretty well covers the covering. The um, only thing left to do on this that I've not done at this time is our exits here for the rudder cables. <clears throat> now I've not cut these, I'll cut these a little later. And like I said, I'm going to put the little scoop on it so it fares that in and keeps water from draining into there. But before I glue these on, I'm going to take it off of the rear tail post stand and set it on a sawhorse, and I can mount the rudder, pull the cables, and actually hook them up to the rudder, and then I can get my exact position for these little aluminum uh, scoops I'm going to put on here. So that'll be done uh, here at a later time. For all practical purposes, though, at this time, other than just finishing our, our dollar patches on the stitches, this fuselage is covered. It's ready for all these tape edges to be ironed. Anytime you glue, you always get a little bit of a, a fairly rough sawtooth edge on the, on the pink tapes. If you take an iron, <clears throat> and we've demonstrated this before, but we can iron those edges, and it, and it makes a lot of, much, much smoother there now. A lot less finish work to do. Now the nice thing, because we've wiped all the surplus glue off, we can iron these tape edges and we don't have to worry about picking up a bunch of glue and smearing glue all over the iron and on the finished product. So with that, that pretty well summarizes the covering on this. We're going to do one extra thing now. We're going to walk up uh, another aircraft in the field. There's a Stabria that we did just about exactly a year ago and I talked about a little different procedure for the vertical fin on that. We're going to walk up and take a video of that and just yeah, talk about that very briefly so it, it gives you an idea of what you can do. Different, different models of aircraft can take a little different technique for what we've de uh, demonstrated here. So we'll go out and talk about that and that will pretty well conclude the series for covering the fuselage. Okay, we're up at the uh, Cetabria. 
Now this is like say we did this last year. This was done exactly like we did the Vagabond down there. I did the bottom, did the two sides, and then we did the top. The one thing that was a deviation on this, when I did the sides, I also did the vertical fin at the same time with the same run of fabric. And the reason I did that is that, if you'll notice, here's the main longeron coming down the fuse lodges, but it runs off to nothing. It's kind of hard to tie into. So what I opted to do, and it worked out really good, was I brought this fabric up to the top stringer, right to here. And when that came up to here, that made a very nice transition into the dorsal portion of the vertical fin. Same way on the other side, it came up, even though it's offset, that transition still was doable on this. So I got the fabric tacked into place, just like we demonstrated, then went ahead and started pulling it. Had a lot of excess fabric through here, so I pulled that over. I had to start trimming and splitting that. That allowed all this fabric to pull around and it worked out very nicely. So what we've got here is a continuous side piece right up through the vertical fin. And then after that was completed, then this little narrow area here all the way up was the final piece of fabric. If you look closely, you can see a little bit of where the overlap on the glue joint is here. Then I finished this with the three inch tape on each side, two inch tape here over the, over the uh, longeron. So, like I say, that's another option on how to do this. Uh, you can kind of let your imagination be your judge, whatever it looks like will work for you. Now, the Vagabond, this would not have worked because of the severity of the transaction. This worked out very well just because of the configuration of it. I think you'll probably find the aircraft like Acrosports and things like that, the side and vertical fin is one piece that probably worked very well on those also. So, that pretty well sums it up. Um, I think you'll have a um, very nice project or a very nice uh, end product with this and um, hopefully the DVD was a, a real good learning tool for you.